Welcome to Unity Inspired Living. Our community began in 1989 as a small worldwide Unity book study group, and we've continued the momentum as an ever-evolving spiritual community. Each Sunday, you will find dynamic thought leaders delivering inspiring messages and talented musicians sharing sound healing through their melody. Here, we embrace ancient spiritual traditions, universal truths, and emerging wisdom. Let's check out this Sunday message. We're so grateful you've joined us. My name is Amy Van Ling, and it is my joy to be here each week with you. I'm so grateful to be in loving service as a spiritual director of this unique, exceptional, dynamic community, uh, sharing a powerful experience with you every Sunday. We are uh, truly many voices sharing inspiration, activating the frequency of love. Uh, We are a place, a space in consciousness where the invitation is to dive deeper into oneness with spirit, into infinite possibilities, into renewal, um, rebirth, wisdom and experience the fullness, the wholeness of our divinity, the profoundness of our authentic nature in our, when we're walking in our truth. So blessings to you upon this Easter day, beloveds. Welcome into our space. Um, so grateful that you're here. I see you tuning in on Facebook live. Easter holds profound significance, you know, for us, the resurrection of Jesus, as we know, you know, symbolic representation of spiritual awakening, if you will, transformation. And just as, you know, the story goes, Jesus rose from the tombs. So can we, um, each individual awaken from the limitations, you know, of life, of egoic self, of the world of appearances. And so this resurrection we can lean into, tune into is the symbol of triumph of the spirit over matter, the material world, uh, love over fear, of eternal life over temporary existence. So thank you for for tuning in this this Easter morning and um, realizing that our innate divinity, um, living from this realization of of Jesus's message, you know, our inherent power to transcend the illusion of separation from God and to live in harmony with divine intelligence, God, mind, all that is and permeates creation. So thank you for tuning in with us today. Um, And I am so grateful today to introduce, to bring back, to welcome in the splendid soul, cherished friend to my personal life, a dear friend to our community, a sheer expression of heart, integrity, beauty, um, just a joy-filled being, Reverend Wendy Silvers, and she is zooming in with us today from the LA area. She's a part of the Agape International Center there in Southern California, and an incredible light in this world uh, who rises every day to shine. And so she's the perfect being, a soul being, to be sharing our message today, which is rise up and shine your light. Uh, she truly lives it. She truly walks her talk. And um, I'm so grateful to have such powerful, authentic people in the world and here with us this morning. So welcome, Wendy. We're so grateful for your yes on this Easter morning. And um, there won't be a workshop today, but our link is always open for everybody who wants to connect there. So with deep gratitude, we welcome you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, another other incredible beings on our in our Zoom room this morning. We have Ronnie and Ed. They are gifting us with their exceptional music, inspiration, talents, beauty, <clears throat> deep, soulful healing, sound healing for us. So thank you, Ronnie and Ed. Thank you for Zooming in from Hawaii today where it's early in the morning there. It's only 7 a.m. there. So they've been up bright and early for us. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have our our one and only extraordinary Jan Knight, uh, our board president and so much more. She is with us sharing her light, sharing her precious heart and soul, bringing to us our selected inspirational reading this morning, our community announcements, and our prayer of plentitude Thank you, Jan. So we welcome you, Wendy, Ronnie, Ed, Jan, and I, we welcome you into our space this morning. Um, And as you enter the space, I invite you to take that intentional 
inward breath of the spirit, you know, my favorite definition of inspiration and know, truly know that you are the face of God choosing, choosing the vibration, the higher vibration, the standard of living and loving and becoming, uh, stepping into that great alignment uh, with God and, and allowing yourself to feel into that, tune into that this morning. Uh, we want our space to be a fertile ground for, for that. And our theme this month of March has been journey with Jesus. And today is the perfect last day of the journey for this month. <laughs> of course, the journey goes on and on. Uh, so we're just leaning into this uh, activation. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he spoke this of universal spiritual principles and practices that he embodied and exemplified. Uh, we've talked about this all month, the way shower. He said, you can do as I do and more and have all the peace and abundance and bliss guidance. This truth will set you free, free from all the limitations from this worldly thinking. So welcome in. It's yours for the taking. Uh, we're so grateful that you're in our sacred space. Let me check in with everybody tuning in and tuning within this morning. Hi, Carol. Carol says, I really appreciate the recordings available on YouTube and watch over and over. Wonderful. Great. We love to hear that. Energizing, that uh, energetic exchange. Florence is here. She says, good morning. Pat is here. She says, beautiful morning transformation every moment. Yes, we affirm. Nancy's here. She says, happy Easter, everyone. So happy to share this day with you. Agree, agree. Carol says, uh, beautiful and amen. Yes. Happy Easter, Jenny. Welcome in beloved souls. We are so delighted to, to be here and um, so grateful that you're tuning into this reverent space and saying yes and coming in for soul nourishment and activating your truth. So I am going to invite you into this reverent space and to allow you to uh, take a moment here just to tune in to your your inner knowing, breathing in the spirit, um, tuning into the frequency of the inspired mind of God and feel into our purpose, which is to be a safe environment for all people to consciously explore their spiritual path, which I say is your life path. Recognize your oneness with God, the almighty presence, gain inspiration, insight, and wisdom and share it with the world. Bring it back. Uh, we're here to be emanating the vibration of love uh, and allowing God to move move in through and as us through our lives, through everybody we come in contact with. So thank you for saying a sacred yes to this um, purpose, this mission, this, this, this journey of love. We are going to open up with our community song, and I'd like to invite you into your heart space where music just that open for you open wide and and i invite you to sing along at home nobody can hear you but it really activates such energy and opens your throat chakra and all the good things so thank you ronnie and ed for being with us and opening our space this morning we appreciate you okay morning everybody uh so let's all sing this little light of mine
so beautifully with our our talk today our talk title so thank you both ronnie and ed we appreciate you okay i'm going to hand the screen over to jan now she has our announcements inspirational reading thank you jan we love you oh my goodness that was great ronnie and ed it brings back all kinds of memories of bible camp and and uh sunday schools <laughs> sunday school and welcome everyone. Happy Easter. It's wonderful, glorious Easter morning here in Northern California. And uh, I'd like to just start with a few announcements. The first, Amy has already announced that we will not be having our workshop uh, today. Instead, I invite you to enjoy your time with your family and friends or just by yourself contemplating transformation. So uh, if you do want to, if you do want to come in, our link is always open, though, if you want to connect. So that's the first announcement. And then next next week, mark your calendars for next Sunday. And we will see you all in person at the West Island Room at the Antioch Community Center. Remember to bring your recyclables. Remember to bring your donations of food and financial donations for loaves and fishes. It's always an important part of our first um for Sunday of the month when we gather. And coming up Saturday, May 18th, which is a couple months away, but it's time to start planning for it, is our 10th annual yard sale. So start cleaning out your closets and your garages and save your donations of clothing, small furniture, household items, etc. No books or large furniture. And be be vigilant because may will be here before you know it <laughs> so we're sending out a huge uh heartfelt thank you to all of you who are continuing to support the van ling family fund each month and we send much love and gratitude to you all for your contributions also if you have not done so already we would like to invite you to consider setting up your monthly contribution commitment to our community, perhaps sending it automatically via Zelle or PayPal or by check. You know, you know that it's your contributions that provide the revenue for speakers and musicians, our spiritual director, Amy, our rental space, our storage unit, our celebrations and all the other activities that we offer each month. So we are very, very, very grateful for all you give and how you bless us with your time and your talents and your contributions. Thank you so much. And thank you all for keeping your calendars up to date and for reading the weekly connection and for participating in all of our wonderful activities throughout the month. So I would invite you to consider bringing a friend along to one of our events that you're coming to in person or online. Just uh, let's, let's get involved and continue to be involved. So I send you blessings and have a wonderful Easter and a wonderful week coming up. So now for our inspirational reading for Easter and um, our journey, like Amy said, our journey for Jesus, journey with Jesus is this is the last day of our focus on that theme perfect day and i i have selected a an a excerpt from an easter sermon by reverend scott aubrey and he has one of my favorite websites called spiritualpassages.org i'm so grateful i i read this all the time he sends out inspirational quotes and humorous jokes and all kinds of things. So I love this website. And this one is called um, Rising Above It All. 
rising above it all. Resurrection isn't just about a prophet who lived 2000 years ago. This is the story of you and me. Jesus was not the great exception. He was the great example. Easter is a time to look at ourselves and contemplate the divinity in us, the depths of our own innate God potential. Resurrection is about new beginnings, but there can be no resurrection without death. Diseases die when are they're given when they give place to health. Poverty dies when it gives way to abundance. Unhappiness passes into oblivion with the new birth of joy and happiness. To die to one experience and be resurrected to a larger experience is spiritual fulfillment. Life has an irresistible urge to expand and we can follow that divine pattern by trading old experiences for new, by passing from death into a greater life. Here is the bottom of the Easter story. The bottom line, you are divine. No matter what you have thought of yourself, no matter what you have done in your life, no matter what opinions you or others may have had of you, no matter how you've crucified yourself, you are divine. The excellence of you is eternal, ageless, and deathless. It's the part of you that is perfect even when, you're ha when you are having imperfect experiences. It's the part of you that knows just what to do even when you're facing confusion and fear. It's the part of you that can never be alone, never be harmed, violated, or endangered in any way. It is the God self in you. So rise up. And as it says in the spiritual text, awake thou that sleepest and Christ shall shine through thee. Thank you. Beautiful reading for us, Dan. Thank you for the announcements and that. I love this. Life has an irresistible urge to expand. Isn't that beautiful? I know that Jan has copies of these. So if you would like one, just go ahead and email me, Amy Vanling at unityinspiredliving.org, and I will get you a copy. Thank you, Dan, for bringing that to us. I am going to hand the screen back over to Ronnie and Ed this morning for our next song. Thank you both so much. So uh, for today, since we have our yukes out, we're going to do a couple Hawaiian favorites. Um, okay, here, here goes. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
passing by, I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? such a joyful favorite and such a reminder you know it is a wonderful world and because life is always working in our favor and we remember that and it's even more wonderful <laughs> thank you both for bringing that joy to us felt appreciated grateful okay i'm handing the screen back over to jan now and she has our prosperity blessing this morning thank you jan Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ronnie and Ed. I love that combination of the, I love the way you do that. It's, it was, it was just perfect, perfect for today. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. I invite you now to join me as we move into a space of oneness with spirit. So take a deep breath, a deep healing breath. And as we quiet our minds, when we open to the great realization of an abundant universe. We connect with an inner stillness that is grounded in the divine flow of giving and receiving. We practice gratitude for all that life gives us and accept there is more, oh, so much more coming our way. We align and operate from our divine nature to give freely from a compassionate heart to ourselves and others assured that we are never void. We set our intention to engage in right action that attracts opportunities to prosper. We are each very, very grateful and we are in a grateful spirit expanding in this human life. We are gratefully succeeding in stepping forward into our greater good. And so it is. Thank you so much, Jan. This, you know, that vibration of gratitude is so potent. It's just so expansive and so transforms everything. So thank you for taking a, us into that space of um, gratitude. In abundance. I'm going to hand the screen back to Ronnie Ed now for some more music, more <laughs> uplifting, and everybody's singing along at home. So we're really enjoying. Thank you both. Uh, so this song is called Hey Aloha Mele, it's an Aloha song. Um,
Fantastic. Thank you for bringing us the aloha this morning. We love it. We embrace it. We receive. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, Ronnie and Ed. We are so grateful for you both. And Jan, thank you for being here with us this morning and everyone tuning in on this beautiful Easter morning. We are just so blessed by you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for having said yes to us today. We're grateful. I will see you on this side of the the broadcast, <laughs> the morning fun. Mwah. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Yay. I'm here with Wendy. I'm so excited. I see everybody tuning in. Thank you for all of the energetic exchange online here. I see your comments. Bonnie's here. Yes, a new day. Thanks for the freshness, Bonnie and Robin. Yay, everybody. Thank you. I see you here. Thank you for all the love uh, that you're pouring in to our morning, to our space. It matters. It makes a difference. Uh, it's, it's potent. So for those of you just getting to know Reverend Wendy, I have her bio to read to you and uh, share a little bit more about her. Wendy Silvers is a sought after mama wisdom teacher, minister, spiritual midwife, author, and sacred activist for the past 18 years. That I think is a bigger number now. <laughs> I just need an update. Not like 20 something years. <laughs> she has been Im immersed in serving moms, children, and families through trauma informed, heart centered parenting. Reverend Wendy believes that a woman steeped in her immense value as sovereign being helps to raise a nation that cherishes the women and children. Mm. Powerful. Wendy co created Prayer as a Way of Life, prayer class at Agape International Spiritual Center, co authored an international best-selling book, Balance for Busy Moms, and founded the Million Mamas Movement, an organization devoted to the empowerment of mothers and ensuring that all mothers and children thrive. 
She produces international prayer events, docu-series, town halls, film screenings, and rallies. Wendy braids her intuitive medium abilities, publicity skills, and trauma-informed training with new thought principles to help people awaken spiritually and cultivate a life of peace, purpose, and prosperity. She has done so much. She shares so many stages with prominent world changers, uh, leaders, and she has so much going on. So I encourage you to find her on Facebook, her website, and follow her and tune into what she's doing. We are so grateful to have you here with us, Wendy. I'm going to activate the space, pray us in, and then hand over the screen for our message this morning, which is a beautiful, potent rise and shine. So I invite you now just to uh, find your center. Take yourself into that sacred space, breathing in the spirit, you know, deeply participating in the divine energetic flow and unfoldment of your life, allowing the light of God to shine in through and as you, reminding you of the truth. But the truth is constant. It's divine intelligence. It's God mind. And lean into, as we lean into this deep knowing, we remember, we recognize, we recognize the truth, the inspired action, ignite and resurrect the divinity, the spark of God that we are all experiencing in this moment, in all of our moments. So grateful to be surrounded and immersed in this magnificence. So grateful and thankful to open ourselves, to receive the love, to hear and feel Wendy's divine download for us today. We cover her in our blessing, our love, and our gratitude saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And I release this word into the great expanse of divine love, in love, where it is all magnified and multiplied. And we have, and so it is. Ashe, namaste. Thank you, dear Reverend Wendy. We're so grateful for you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to say hello to everyone. Aloha. Thank you so much, Ronnie and Ed. Oh my God. I've been like, woo, I'm like dancing over here, singing so beautiful. And for that blessing, Jan, um, thank you for what you read from spiritual passages. Uh, dearest Amy, thank you for holding this magnificent space as you do and for creating a place where people can come and receive the mana, receive the goodness of this presence. And uh, it's it's so fascinating to me because it's it, there's something about being in high consciousness, right? Being in a community where there's a dialogue and there's a field that's been established, like you established. And so I was, I was thinking, I was sitting over here, I'm like, okay, well, you know, the message has been delivered, okay. And so it is, <laughs> and so it is, right? Because what, what we're speaking about to me, Easter and Passover and Ramadan, what we're talking about are miracles. It's all a miracle. And this, the, the, the scripture, uh, I remember one of, my, uh, one of my biblical scholar teachers said that the Bible was a journal of the Near Easterners. So this was a journal and it was, it was literal, but not factual. So Yeshua, as he was called in his native Aramaic, didn't speak Western English. He spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. So we, in this year of 2024, we have received all of these different interpretations of what this great master teacher taught us or shared from these personal experiences, especially in the Old Testament, of these people moving through these life lessons of, of, of heartbreak and tragedy to be to move to the other side. So when I think about one of the things that she said to me 
is uh, she said that Jesus was at the Passover Seder. So the sacred dinner was a Passover Seder and he died and woke up Christian. And so if we think about the etymology and we think about the beginning and we think about this way shower as was so beautifully articulated that he is not the exception, he is the example we get to think about what is the message from all of the sacred texts from Easter, from Passover, there's still Ramadan is ending. What is the message? And to me, what dropped in so clearly is the message is about miracles. Where are there miracles in your life? Where have you symbolically gone through a crucifixion? Right. So we think about the literal, which is brutal. And what happened to this man of being put on a cross and nails through his wrists and his ankle. I mean, it was just brutality. And then where in your life have you had a crucifixion? I know for me, I've had a number of them. I can remember a time when I was literally on my knees in my kitchen, when I lived in Manhattan, I'm from New York, native New Yorker. So I was in there and I was going through a really bad relationship and I was on my knees and I was just praying, okay, God, I need help because I can't do what I need to do for myself. I need divine intervention. I had, I would, I had lost my job. I was going through all of these very big life passages, looking at my life, thinking, where am I going to go? Has anybody had that moment when you're literally on your knees? Right? Right. I know Amy, what you've been through in this past, you know, year, I, I it's just, and those moments, Rumi says, when the world brings you to your knees, it is, you are in a perfect position to pray. But what's the prayer? What's the prayer that is being prayed in this moment of crucifixion? Heal me. Show me the way. Help me rise up. And that's in consciousness. Because as Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem at the level of the consciousness that created the problem. And in our world, you can see the, the divisiveness. You can see that people are warring. They're gonna match you know, calamity with calamity. They're gonna match violence with violence. They're gonna match quip with quip. They're gonna make somebody wrong, bad and wrong. They're gonna give as good as they got. You know, Dr. Howard Thurman talks about in um, I want to be more loving in my heart. And he says to move beyond giving as good as I've gotten, right? So when we think about the Easter holiday or we think about Ostra, which back in the day, the original day when the women were was matriarchal societies and the women were honoring the seasons, Ostra was the goddess of of rebirth, of renewal, of the spring, O-E-S-T-R-E, -E, you can look it up. So we think about this world where everybody's talking about patriarchy, the end of patriarchy. Well, what about internalized patriarchy where we are crucifying ourselves? One of my biggest growing edges is self-love is letting go of the bat that I have on my back, right? So we can know spiritual principle. We can know spiritual truth. The miracle is to be moved from that place of crucifixion. So that was just one crucifixion in my life where I was moved. I was moved. I did rise up. I did have psychic change and a shift in consciousness. But I was up for it. I was so on my knees. I'm so done with this. I do not want to repeat this pattern ever. And yet, I think I did. 
at other times, right? So it's the miracle is, can I remember who I am, that I am a divine being here to reveal and reflect the glory of this divine presence, whatever name you call this presence, through the release of those patterns that no longer serve me, as well as the releasing into the world those gifts, those skills, those talents that I have. How can I be that power of example? How can I lean in to God? How can I resurrect myself from the ashes of my life? I cannot tell you how many times I've had ashes in my life, right? And I happen to be, um, my sun sign is Scorpio. And Scorpio is a, is, is the, about life and death. <laughs> Lucky me. But, right, it's like, what an experience. So I'm brought to the depths of despair only to rise like the phoenix. Because I'm here to live the miracle. I am here to reveal and reflect the glory of God through and as my very life, through all that I do. I think all the time, how am I being of service? How will this serve? I There was a time when I was so ill. I have, I was given a diagnosis and I had a health condition that I still, that, that I have, I have a loss of hearing in my left ear and I have to do certain things to make sure that my energy is pristine. There was a time that I didn't drive. There was three times in my life. I didn't drive for a year. I didn't drive for six months. I didn't drive for three months. That was my own personal crucifixion because I can tell you, I was on my knees, on my knees asking, the God of my understanding, is this what I'm here for? Is this what I was here for? I just can't believe that I'm here not to be able to be present for my life, for my marriage, for my child, that I'm going to this doctor and that healer and this person, but it was about me rising. I was brought to my knees. Many times I was brought to my knees. And when you looked at me, right? Anybody have, I gotta look good syndrome? Always gotta look good. Don't let them see you sweat. Don't put your business out in the street. Anybody receive those messages? I gotta do it all myself. I can't lean into anyone else because if I lean into anyone else, then I'm weak. I'm not really a spiritual evolved person if I'm sick or if I have a prognosis or if I ask someone to help me. But insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. So here we are at Easter. Here we are, the opportunity to rise up and shine your light. So how do you rise up when you're in the crucifixion? It's about surrender. We talk about the jealousy and envy. We talk about shame and uh, self-judgment, right? What about pride? Where does pride come into it, right? So I think pride and shame ride shotgun because pride is I'm gonna do it myself. I'm not gonna ask anyone for help. I have degrees. I've lived life a long time. I've done some things. I know some people. I got this. I'm not gonna admit that in certain situations, I don't have the answers. So humility is the ability to be teachable. So if you're moving through your life and there's any situation that you may have, I know I can think of a few in my life where I do not have the answers. 
I want the answers. So I do my work, my inner work, because suffering is not mine or your soul path. We are all going to go through shizzle. It's just, you know, it's like the fine print. And if you are studying with somebody or following somebody who doesn't share about the shizzle, but only talks from the mountain, which creates more shame and self-judgment, right? How come I'm not up there? I uh, mm -mm. Suffering is optional. Yes, trials and tribulations will happen. The ashes, they're going to happen. The crucifixion is going to happen. So we have this great man, this great, extraordinary human who said, I know why I'm here. I'm here to bring forth love and compassion, who talked about forgiveness. He'd never talked about holding a grudge. He never walked around saying, oh, yeah, you know, well, that so-and-so, that Pharaoh, that person, they did that. He didn't talk about that. He talked about turn the other cheek. Do you know what that also means? Have a different consciousness. Turn the other cheek. Don't stay in that vibratory frequency of anger and grudge and resentment. Where's forgiveness? Give forth. Let that person go. Forgive that situation. Forgive yourself. You know how people used to joke about let yourself off the cross, right? So it's kind of blunt, right? It's, it's a hard image, let yourself off the cross. But I know that many of you that are here with us today care deeply about the world care deeply about what we're living in. And we are living in an amazing time. I mean, like, no joke. And the opportunity is to rise and shine your light. There are so many images throughout the Bible about the light, the light, the effulgence within each person, the light. Ishua talks about the light. So now we get to a point. So we've had the crucifixion. We're, we're, we're in it. We're on our knees and we're willing to rise up again and again. And still I rise. And still I rise. Because it's not how many times you stumble or fall. It is how many times do you rise how many times do you get up after a weary night and make breakfast for their children? How many times do you get up from something and hug someone and say, I see you, brother. I see you, sister. I'm with you. You're not alone. How many times do we look in the mirror and say, I love you? I love you because you are walking through the crucifixion. So this man gave us, he gave us, I mean, really, he gave us a way. He gave us the way, the truth, and the light. I know people say the life, but the light, the light that lighteth up every man, woman, and child who cometh into this dimension. We're talking consciousness. In my father's house, there are many mansions. There's many levels of consciousness. As we see evidence of in the external events that are happening in our world, the highest of consciousness and the lowest of consciousness. And it's not a judgment. It's an observation. It's any, you know, we, we see, how does that land on us when we see what's happening? The things that just Break our heart open personally, like what Amy's been going through. This, this is a, 
one of the deepest passageways. So you, you rise up, you hid with Christ. It's not religious. It's a state of enlightenment. Again, the light, the Christ. To be enchristed is to be enlightened. I have to tell you something. I did not know until 1999, maybe it was, yeah, it was 1999, that Yeshua was Jewish, that he was a rabbi. I never knew that. I've been, I've been on a spiritual path since I'm, since I'm eight, but I didn't know that. So here we talk about unity. We're at Unity Inspired Living Center. One of my favorite people talks about healing the divide. How do you heal the divide? You have a man who was a rabbi who followed spiritual texts when he went those 40 days, those 40 nights into the desert, into consciousness to expand his consciousness. When he went to all of the sacred places, he went to Egypt, he studied, he studied the sacred teachings. He had the crucifixion, and then he became the symbol of Christianity. But how do you deny that he was Jewish? That he practiced Judaism, that he practiced the sacred teachings of many different faiths. That's unity. We can stop fighting about that now. We could, we could really do that. We could just say we are all connected in the heart. We are here to shine the light, the light of the Christ, the light of the enlightenment. And what does shine stand for? Spirit, harmony, inspiration, breathing in, right? So when we are born, we enter on a breath, we cry. When we exit, we exhale. And in between is the dash. How are we going to live from the inhalation to the exhalation? We get to shine. Spirit, harmony, inspiration, new thought. Have a new thought. Just like Einstein, you can't solve the problem at the level of, of the consciousness that created the problem. So you have a new thought. And then E, evolve. So we are given this great life. And I know, I know personally what it's like to go through those crucifixions. So I know if you're going through a crucifixion period right now, you're going to get through it. It's not your destination. Many times it's an entry point to an up leveling of your consciousness. So it is not to be denied or dismissed or disregarded. It's just not your final resting place because you are meant to be resurrected. You are meant to rise up and shine spirit harmony inspiration new thought evolve not deny dismiss disregard ignore pretend we are so done with the pretending yes like we are so done with acting like this isn't happening we get to look at what's in front of us and make a choice and then another choice. Sometimes the only choice is to take a shower, to change your clothes, to wash your face, to make breakfast or lunch or dinner for the children, to walk the dog, to pray, to let go of thinking that things are always going to be this way. 
It is to have that resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am what the moment required. I am that I have come, that you may have life and have life more abundantly. The kingdom of heaven is within. I am. I am the resurrection. What are you resurrecting in your life right now? Where is your life hid with Christ? The end lightened. I think I'm shaking my computer. So my invitation to you this day of Easter, which, se which celebrates a miracle, a miracle. This man was entombed and he rose again. This great man who, who, who would walk over to people and say, rise, rise. And they would rise, who could heal because it was consciousness, because he had no other thought. But I and my mother, father, God are one. He steeped himself in spiritual principle. But he was also human enough to know when there was injustice. He was the Prince of Peace. So today, I invite you to look at your life, to see where you're in the crucifixion. What needs to be resurrected? Is it your consciousness? We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are the only mammals that have dominion over our thoughts. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. God, the great divine presence, or this mortal experience. Not denying or, or dismissing what shows up. What am I here to resurrect? Shine my light. I am the light of the world. That's not egotistical. That's the truth, the light that lighteth up every man, woman, and child that cometh into this world. And the opportunity for continual growth and unfoldment, your soul's growth and unfoldment is right where you are, right where you are. So you get to rise and shine. You get to rise up. You get to awaken again and again and again. I've been teaching this magnificent morning. I call it the Morning Mystic Mastermind. And we started with 40 days into the desert. We meet every morning from 7.30 to 8 a.m. It is a meditative, prayerful, inspirational, setting your day or resetting your day. And now it's called awaken because it's not a one and done. Even though Yeshua Isha, came into this dimension and after those 40 days, he just he had further proof, further steeping of what he was here for, his mission. He didn't stop. So that's why it's called spiritual practice. So wherever you are, in your life, if you're in the resurrection, if you're slowly emerging from the ashes, I just invite you to rise up and shine your light, the light of the divine that is within you and lean in to those people that love you, that see who you truly are that want your highest and greatest good, that don't stifle you or suppress you or tell you, you th you're think too big. They think too small. Remember, you don't bring your, your problems to a small God. You bring your big God to your problems. Whatever's showing up in your life that you are seeking healing around. So 
This is a day of miracles. Miracles are a shift in perception. Miracles are around you all the time. I invite you to rise up and shine your light. And if I may do a very quick lasered uh, prayer. <sighs> My heart is overflowing with gratitude, with gratitude and thanksgiving for this opportunity to be here this morning at Unity Inspired Living to be with my beloved sister, my soul sister, Amy, to be with Jan and to be with Ronnie and Ed and the beautiful vibration of music, to be with each and every person who has said yes to be here and being here on Facebook at this particular time in history as we celebrate the miracle of this day, Easter, this invitation to remember this great man, this great master teacher, this great example, this great way shower who moved through the resurrection from his crucifixion. So we honor wherever anybody in this group is in a crucifixion moment, knowing that their resurrection is at hand and that the invitation to rise up and shine your light is there. It has been issued and you have an opportunity to RSVP, yes. So knowing that each and every person gathered in this sacred circle is held, is loved, I simply call forth peace and peace of mind. I call forth abundance, prosperity, health, wholeness, vitality. I call forth love, pressed down and overflowing. And I call fulfillment, filled full with good, filled full with God, filled full with love. And knowing that that is so, I simply allow that to be saying, and so it is. Amen. Ashe. Aho. Mahalo. It is done. Amen. Amen. Wow. Beautiful. And as you were speaking, I'm thinking, yeah, and, and and Jesus was such the example of of being merciful and and moving with grace through such crucifixion yeah. and forgiveness, you know, just exuding forgiveness. Forgive them, Father, you know. For they know not what they do. Right. Yeah. And what mercy. It's such a beautiful story. It's such a beautiful lesson for us. And you brought it so mm, to home, to heart. And one of the last things you said, I, I jotted down because it was really important. And it, and you said it quickly. So I wanted to come back and you said, bring the thing, you know, whether you're calling that a problem or whatever it is, bring the thing to God, you know, bring what's bothering you to God and not necessarily I'm sorry, bring God to the thing versus bringing the thing to God, you know, bring God into that. And that's a difference. Yeah. It's a really profound difference and um, important. I thought to just kind of circle back to and just touch on because it's a different energy entirely to say, bring God into the space versus here, here, this, is, <laughs> you know, well, so yeah. um, well, go ahead. Well, we often myself included, can have a very limited perspective of what God is, right? In 12-step circles, they talk about the God of your understanding, not the God of your misunderstanding. Mm. And so oftentimes, depending on people's religious upbringings, there can be a God who is fire and brimstone, who's sitting up there like Santa Claus, checking off you've been naughty you've been nice i'll give you love i won't give you love you can have that oh no but you can't have that and so it's this perception of this very small presence that's conditional fear, right always conditional mm -hmm. so when we begin to grow and evolve we decide it's a decision every day we get to sometimes several times a day we get to decide again and again who's are we a God that is so limited that we have to keep over and over again trying to, you know, win God's approval, which sets up behaviors and patterns and thoughts that are so hurtful mm -hmm. 
Or are we going to move into that expanded awareness of a loving God, a compassionate God, a God that wants our highest and greatest good to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. not to stay in the vision stage, but to be concretized. And mm -hmm. that God it speaks through people. And at the very center of our being is that God place. So we are never disconnected unless we step away. Mm. Right. And fall, fall prey to the illusion of separation. And, and sometimes, and sometimes we, the, we do. And sometimes the prayer, sometimes it is like, help me. Mm. Right. Why me doesn't really, that's never going to give us mm -hmm. an answer. Like mm -hmm. why, mm -hmm. but help me, mm -hmm. help me to have a different perspective. Help me in this moment. Right. You know, and then that's where people that love us come in so they can love us till we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. till we're yes. able to get back up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Course in Miracles talks about this. Jesus says, I want to be alongside of you. I want to partner with you. Just call me in, you know, and sometimes we forget that that spot in life. Like, oh, yeah, let me call it in. <laughs> let me well, ask. I, you were, I think you were talking about the time, how we changed the time, how it used to be for farming. <laughs> Earlier before we went live, yes. Right? Well, if you think about the life changes that have happened and the, and the evolving generations. If you think about, there was that, that even though people were devoutly religious with mm -hmm. the conditions, right? Mm -hmm. There was this work ethic, ethic that went along with it. Like if you mm -hmm. think of the native peoples, the first peoples, it was about community, not, not exclusion, but it was about community. You went to this person for this, and this person did this, and this person did this, and each and every person had a purpose. Just like when when animals were killed, were hunted, each part of the animal had a purpose. Right. But the right. Western mind, the American, you know, do it myself, <laughs> excluded anybody. Yeah. And it was competitive or, you know, it's this mine, territorial. Native American peoples didn't think like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and there were, you know, there was war between different tribes, but but it it, it, it it the whole basis of Native American, of course I'm doing a circle and it's just like the spirit, it's just like in spiritual passages, this presence, you know, who's, you know, birthless, deathless, changeless, formless whose circumference is everywhere right we get to move into that to allow people to be there to allow us to be there to receive when someone mm -hmm. wants to give us love i mean you know with it's a whole nother conversation you know there's right. boundaries <laughs> and limits and all that kind of stuff these have lots but of limits different pathways off of that. right but but i'm talking about in the in the in the god sense yes in the yes. god sense so. right right very important well let me just uh, poke in here to our feed and see um lots of comments thanks carol for being a part and sharing your uh energy with us awaken this day of miracles thank you so very much reverend wendy for sharing this powerful message with all of us so grateful that's from jennifer jan says remembering a quote i had on my refrigerator for many years don't be little yourself be big yourself you rise and shine thank you so much wendy Lewinda says very inspirational and comforting message wendy inspires me to feel hopeful oh um Carol says, whose are we? Expanded awareness. Yes. Jan says, rise and shine and bring God the glory. Glory brings such a deeper meaning and interpretation to the song from my childhood. Yes. Doesn't it? Right. You got to talk when it's your story or your glory. <laughs> oh, I love that. Remember the glory story. Uh, and Pat says, you are one with God. Align your thoughts with the higher goodness and truth in order to bring love into the world. Mm. 
Carol says community. Yes. What am I here to resurrect? Yeah, that was one of the um, the last things I jotted down that Wendy had written or had spoke to um, is, you know, where are you in the crucifixion? So we can be contemplating this. And what is, you know, wanting to be resurrected? What am I here to resurrect? And um, there's so many beautiful <laughs> micro messages in this overall message. So you probably want to go back and listen to this one again. This is probably a, a replay one, definitely. Um, because it really spoke to, you know, something that Jan had read in the reading earlier about life has an irresistible urge to expand. And and this is like the process. <laughs> the talk is like, and, and how does that look and to rise up and in consciousness? Um, living beyond is good. Um, I like how you brought in the Bostera, the goddess, you know, honoring the seasons of rebirth. And you said, where was it that I wrote down? You said something that was pretty significant too about where in our um, mind are we internalizing patriarchy? I thought that was a good something to contemplate there too. You know, there's so many nuggets in here. <laughs> And we could really, uh, really dive d deep. And, and this is what, this is what we're all about is like, so that you can tune into what's coming up for you and where you are. And if you're in the ashes, if you're right, where you are in the whole scene of, of this Jesus story, particularly. And again, like, it's not always, it's not a one and done, right? We're, we always get the opportunity to continue expanding. And that's, yes. that's the great gift. Yeah. yeah the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> yeah. because life is always seeking more of itself, right. not less. You, that Howard Thurman is, you know, you probably know it right off the top about um, what he said about which one I, I know that's right. Which one? And I wrote it down because I was like, Oh, I love him. Be more loving in my heart. I love not him. Just give about beyond, being beyond being beyond well I could I have I have written so many <laughs> one of my favorite, one of my not giving as good as you get that you yeah not giving and I one of the things that I love that thank you Dr. Thurman I hope that it's okay yeah. with you but I love to you talk about the traffic of life mm. because he talks about the traffic of life the comings and goings yeah right nice. that we right. have yeah. So we're in the traffic of life. We're in, we if we're in the crucifixion and we're, or we're in the resurrection, it's in the traffic of life. Yeah. We don't want to get caught by the traffic of life, by, you know, social media and the opinions. You want to go beyond. Life is always seeking more of itself. That's why we have the crucifixion and the resurrection. That's why we rise up because there's always more that's seeking expression. Yeah. So yeah, we get to choose in, in every moment, you know, the, the, the consciousness, the vibration, our frequency. I mean, we are frequency. That's how we show right. up right. and, and what we want to sort of get into the muck and mire of the world of appearances and opinions and judgments and divide or right. right. One of the things that I remember, uh, so much, uh, one of my teachers was this man named, uh, Nirvana. And uh, when I was first going through practitioner tr training at Agape, I mean, it was like very like, you know, first year or something. I, I, and he talked about his past work and he worked with the county um, with family child services. And so sometimes there would be cases that would, you know, come across his desk. And the one thing he said to me that I always remembered was first I cried and then I prayed. Mm. So throughout my yeah. journey at, at, you know, as a student and then as a, as a teacher, I never forgot that. Mm -hmm. First I cried and then I prayed. Mm -hmm. So really. when you go through the crucifixion, mm -hmm. you may cry. Yeah. You, there may be gnashing of teeth. There may be like holding the head. There may be so many variables of how that shows. And then the mm -hmm. resurrection right. rising from those ashes. 
to be yes. requalified, to have yes. another experience, to have another layer released and another level increased. Right. It's rather exciting. <laughs> Yeah, when you think just, about it, you know, like in, 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 in the, in the crucifixion, yeah, it can be absolutely agonizing. And yet we hold on to what we know is true. And, and it's hard. Yeah. And I, I mean, in the really human important. experience, it's, 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 you can have, I, I want to also say you can have this knowledge. Yeah. And when you go through it, you go through it. Right. It's when you get to the other side or even right. those glimpses, right? Like those glimpses, the things that happen when you're going through something, the, mm -hmm. the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. And you have moments when you're feeling good. Oh my gosh, all of a sudden you're feeling good. You're laughing. And then you have that back thought that goes, oh, but mm -hmm. is that okay? I've said through my, you know, most recent experience, I can hold both. Right. You know, so it's a, exactly. it's okay to hold both. And and I've been, and we spoke about this at the top was like being real about our experiences is not always just doing this bypass and, you know, sugarcoating stuff. It's like, sometimes we walk through how, you know, and we rise from those ashes. And um, it's such an important, it's such an important message to be authentic and real about. And I agree. Um, I know this community knows I'm for sure about that authenticity and bringing people who like Wendy, who are so authentic as well into our space. So thank you, Wendy. Can you tell everybody where to find you? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I forgot. I was like, okay, bye. Um, so I, you can, you can email hello at Wendy Silvers, S I L V E R S dot com. You can also find me on Instagram rev wendy silvers facebook i have rev wendy silvers and wendy silvers um, if you want to join the awaken journey feel free to just reach out after after this or pm me or dm me and uh i'm here for you i'm i'm here i do one-on-ones i speak i do groups uh speaking and teaching so I'm Thank here. you, beautiful Wendy. We're so grateful for you and your presence on this earth and for oh, being here yeah. present with us this morning, this Easter morning. Thank you everybody you. for being here, for tuning in, for the sacred yes to nourish your soul. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember that if you feel this um, refresh, this restoration, this renewal, and you wish to have an energetic exchange with us, just visit our website, unityinspiredliving.org and look at our giving page. And we are so grateful for all of the energy that you pour into us. It, it creates a space where we can keep giving and giving from our hearts, which we love to do. We are going to close with our prayer of divine awakening. So I'm going to share the screen right now with you. And I invite you into make this a declaration for your life, for your every day an activation, uh, an activation, really. Yeah. An invocation. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes an open heart and expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely and move forward in a state of appreciation and extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. And as I say every Sunday, but it really is potent and works for this Sunday is shine on bright beings of love. Shine it, shine it, shine it. Thank you, Reverend Wendy. We love you. We appreciate you. you. Blessings, blessings, everybody. Happy Easter. Mwah.